So, how do YouTubers get hacked? Well, we'll find out today, because they try to hack me. Unfortunately for them, however, I'm a threat researcher, so we'll be analyzing their hacks instead. And hopefully, this will help you figure out how to not get hacked. This is Leo, and you're watching the PC Security Channel. As you can imagine, I get a ton of junk email. Mostly, I just ignore and move on with my life. But this time, I decided to play along just to see what would happen. So, here's one that is obviously like a scam, because... If you look at the email address, socialpointdragoncity at gmail.com, this is clearly not a company email address and this is not a proper sponsor email. Hello, we want to make a promotional video on your YouTube channel for your pre-roll lasting 60 seconds. So already red flags there, bad English. Our official website, dragoncitygame.com. And if you notice, this is not the domain of the email. So even if this is a legitimate game, that does not mean that the email is a legitimate inquiry for sponsorship. Read the contract for details. A short Dropbox link. Before that though, I just wanna say that this was not their original email. So their original email is very short. It doesn't have any links. When you respond to it, you get the real deal. So yeah, there's a Dropbox link. Format PC. I guess that means you're supposed to open it on a PC because that's where the malware is going to work. And there's a password on the archive. And as we'll go over the file itself, you will see that it's very, very dangerous. Major disclaimer, do not do this at home, guys. You will be hacked and nasty things will happen. So we've got a promo contract.zip downloaded. Open archive. You can see five different EXCs, each of them saying things like apps for YouTube integration, price for integration from 2 million to 10 million subscribers, price for 100,000 to 2 million subscribers. That's me. So I guess we're supposed to download this one. I mean, extract. And at this point you might think, well, who's going to open this EXC for a contract? That's stupid. Like, of course the contract would be a Word document or a text file or a PDF and not an EXE. You would expect your typical antivirus to kick in and say, well, this is malware and remove it. But the reason that may not happen is because this file is 715 megabytes in size. This is massive. No antivirus is gonna scan a file this big. And guess what? You can't analyze it online either. So let's say you're a wary user and you're like, no, I really want the sponsorship deal, but you know what? I'm going to double check this file on Vars Total because I don't want to get malware or something like that. So I'm just going to drop it here. Guess what? 650 megabytes is the maximum size of a file that you can upload to Vars Total. So I suspect that is kind of the reason it shows 750 megabytes and not. 650 or 649. So what do we do about this? How do we know if uh, this is a safe application that's gonna open up an app on our desktop? Maybe it's got the game packed in. Maybe that's why it's a big application. And for that, we're gonna have to do some malware analysis. So to start off, we're gonna use PE Studio Pro. So I'm just gonna open it up in PE Studio and we'll drag and drop this file. So we can see already that this is a file that's coded in Visual C Sharp. The description is document, it's a 32-bit executable. Right away, there are 38 indicators, but none of these are really like sure shot indicators, maybe apart from something like this. This is pretty obvious here. Other than that, we can't really see a lot. We can't look at the first total analysis, we can't really do a MITRE analysis either. And that's because of this massive file size. Why is this file so huge? So this file has an overlay. It seems to be quite compressed. The first bytes are all zeros. I suspect what we're gonna find, surprise, surprise, is that this file is mostly empty space that's just been crammed in there to increase the file size artificially. And the way we're gonna deal with that is we're going to open this in Hex Editor. So I'm just gonna open Hex64. Just gonna load this file in here and so it starts off like a normal exe would. You've got the, you know, stub over there. But as we scroll down, guess what? There's nothing, it's just zeros. <laughs> it's blank information. And then if we go all the way to the very end, we've got some information there too. All the bits of zeros are in the middle. So you've got this entire segment that's just zeros. But I do wanna do an in-depth analysis of this and actually find out what type of malware this is. How is it going to hack your YouTube? We can't figure that out yet. We're gonna to have to make this file smaller. So all I have to do, look, this is really advanced stuff here, okay? Malware authors hate this secret trick. And that's gonna be just 
clicking here, pressing shift, going all the way to the bottom of the file, and then selecting everything and then pressing the delete button on the keyboard. And it says, this operation changes the file size. Do you want to proceed? And we're going to okay that and boom. And now I think we're at a point where, mm, yeah, most of the zeros are gone and we'll just give it a name real contract.exe and we're just going to export it to desktop and now we have our real contract if we click on properties as you can see this is only now 142 kilobytes huh so we went from 750 megabytes to 142 kilobytes just by removing blank space and now we're ready to upload this to Intezer for analysis. By the way, this video is sponsored by them. They're an amazing threat analysis platform, so check them out. But we're just gonna select our file here and it is going to analyze it. May take a minute, but soon we're going to see some results. And already, as you can see, we've got a code gene match of about 40% with some other malware. This is also going to execute it dynamically in a sandbox and that's going to give us some more insights, but already you can tell this is malware and it's been flagged, but I do want to go more in depth and figure out what exactly it does. So we're going to wait for the dynamic execution to complete. All right, it seems like the dynamic execution is complete. And as you can see, we've got a ton of process in memory. Oh, this is lovely. We can directly look at the TTPs and these are the tactics techniques that it uses. So obvious one here for defense evasion is process injection. So it uses process hollowing. Everything we're seeing here are classic techniques, how malware tries to evade detection from things like antivirus programs or Windows Defender, which is why I kind of insist on behavioral protection every time I make a video on this channel. Now, if we take a look at some of the things in memory, you can see that we've got the actual payload, which is being extracted at this step. And this is a red line stealer. Ta-da! There you go, no wonder. So that explains how they would hack your YouTube account or the whole purpose of sending these emails to YouTubers. Essentially, you have an info stealer component within this malware package that's going to run on your system. And when you log into YouTube next, it's just going to steal all your credentials. And some of these stealers can actually even steal your 2FA credentials. All you have to do is do a full login and they probably have a script in there that's going to delete your cookies and force you to log into YouTube yourself. It's gonna appear normal to you. Maybe it's just been too long and I need to re-log into YouTube. And then the moment you go through that process, they're gonna be able to get that information using the stealer from your computer and hack into your account. So this is definitely a very dangerous threat and one of the ways in which some of the YouTubers they've seen being compromised were probably compromised. Another thing to note is if we go back to our system and open this up in P Studio again, if we look at the file header, you'll see that we've got a very recent compiler timestamp. This is only from January 20th this Thursday. So this file was compiled very recently. It shows that the attackers are active and they created this specifically for the campaign that sent me the email. So watch out for this sort of stuff. Um, it doesn't only happen to YouTubers, of course. You could be a victim of this. You could be attacked by the same stuff. Be wary of exe files that look like other files. Just because something looks like a Word document doesn't mean it is. And also, if something is 715 megabytes, there's a good chance it's gonna bypass your antivirus defenses, especially if you're using just some random crap free AV or Windows Defender. So a good reason to think about your security if you're purely relying on signature-based defenses. But I hope you found this video helpful. Please share it because I think there are a lot of people who just don't understand how this works and might fall for such attacks. Show this video to your friends who may not be as tech savvy and spread the word. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this analysis. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. And of course, a big thank you to our sponsors, Intizer Analyze. If you wanna do your own analysis or just check out something suspicious on your system, Intizer Analyze is a great way to do it. You can check them out at analyze.intizer.com and you can sign up for a free community account. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.